So today we'll be going over how to solve for the torque reactions in a system. In other words, these are to torque loaded members that are statically indeterminate. Now, if you remember to a previous video where we did statically indeterminate axially loaded members such as this, where we had a member between two walls and we had an external load being applied. Now, with the equilibrium equations alone would not suffice to be able to solve for the reactions at A and C. In this case, we had to use a different um, relationship or a comparability equation. Now, similarly, we have the same situation when it comes to torque loaded members. In this case, we have this shaft fixed on one end as well as the other end it's fixed. And then we have some external torque being applied somewhere along the shaft torque. Now, we have to solve for the actual reactions at each of the fixed points. So you have, let's say, torque A, and then you have at this other end torque B. And we know the sum of the torques is equal to zero in this case because it's in static equilibrium. This shaft is not spinning around. It actually deforms a bit, but it's in static equilibrium. In this case, we could just use a sign convention here as positive or negative. So in addition to this relationship, we also have the angle of twist which is equal to a torque times the length divided by gj. Now in this case, the sum of the angles of twist is equal to zero because let's say the original point of what we're looking at is here, then the torque is being applied. So let's say this is our neutral axis. So once this torque is being applied, it'll actually twist a bit to this portion wherever the torque is being applied. But then we also have this other fixed end as well. So once you get closer to the other fixed end, it'll also be at that position. So these angles of twists will basically cancel out. So the sum of the angles of twist is equal to zero. So these are the two relationships you're going to be using to be able to solve for the reactions. So let's go ahead and do an example. So for this problem statement, we have the steel shaft has a diameter of 40 millimeters and is fixed at its ends A and B. If it is subjected to the couple moment, determine the maximum shear stress in regions AC and CB of the shaft. The modulus of elasticity is given is equal to 75 gigapascals. So we have here point A point B and point C here. So we have all the necessary dimensions. Diameter of the shaft is 40 millimeters. We have at what point this couple moment is being applied, 400 millimeters from here, from point A to point C, and from C to B is 600 millimeters. Now we know what this torque is, right, due to a couple moment. So it gives us 0.3 kilonewton meters of torque being applied here. Now if you recall, to solve for the couple moment, Moment, we have two equal and opposite forces acting on each of the ends and to solve for the torque is equal to that that force being applied times the distance between these two equal and opposite forces or you can actually do one at a time right three kilonewtons times 0 0.05 meters plus the other one because the torque is being along the same direction so you just add them up and you get the same answer 0.3 kilonewton meter is the torque being applied to this shaft here so we can see that this couple moment is along this direction. That's how the torque is being applied to this shaft counterclockwise. Now to make things a little bit more easier, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and draw that free body diagram of this shaft with the torques and the reaction torques as well at A and B. So we have that torque T that we just solved for and we have the torque reaction and B. We know it's going to be um, opposite of it. So the sum of torques cancel out being equal to zero. So we have TB. And for A, it's also going to be opposite of this. So it's going to be going clockwise at A, T, A. Now, in this case, we're going to go ahead and do the sum of angle of twist being equal to zero to be able to solve for the unknowns in this system. So let's go ahead and do that. So what's very helpful when it comes to doing the sum of the angle of twist is what torque do you apply to the equation? Now this could be a little bit confusing. However, um, the second you could actually split up 
what portion of this shaft that you're going to be analyzing. So we're going to analyze the shaft from point A to C, and as well as from B to C. So in this case, I went ahead and cut up the, the, each portion of the shaft to solve for the internal forces that we used to do in statics. In this case, it's going to be the, the torque along this segment of A and C. So if you were to draw a free body diagram from point A to this point where I just cut up, we'll see that the internal torque in this is actually going to be Ta for, for static equilibrium. In this case, it's going to be equal and opposite of Ta. So it's going to be counterclockwise Ta. And similarly for the other section, for when you solve for the angle of twist here, you're looking from point B to this point where I just cut up. And we're going to see torque B is going clockwise. Therefore, the internal torque here at this point where I just cut up is equal and opposite. So it's going to be counterclockwise. So, and it's equal. So we see the internal torque here is equal and opposite of TB. All right, so these are the torques that we're going to be using. So from shaft A to C, we have TA that we're going to be using. So TA times the length AC divided by the shear modulus and the polar moment of inertia. And then remember it's the sum of the angle of twists. The other section is TB, TB times the length BC divided by shear modulus times the polar moment of inertia. And this is equal to zero. Now, one thing to keep in mind is the sign convention of this. Remember in the previous video, we denoted as the sign convention being this. Counterclockwise rotation is positive. Clockwise is negative. So in this case, TA is counterclockwise positive and TB is going to be clockwise. So TB, this one is going to be a negative. One of them is positive. The other one is negative. Um, in this case, it'll be helpful if you look at the shaft, viewing it from this point here. And you see that this TB is, is clockwise, which is negative. So here we have one relationship. Now, what about the other? Remember, which was previously stated here, the other relationship to be used is the sum of torques being equal to zero. And we'll use counterclockwise as positive as well. So T, so we have T, which is positive because it's going counterclockwise, minus T A is going clockwise, minus T B is going clockwise is equal to zero. So let's go ahead and use this relationship here to solve for TA, so TA is equal to T minus TB. So we have this first relationship, and we could go ahead and plug in this TA into the sum of the angle of twist. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have t the torque T minus TB times LAC, take away TB, LBC. One thing to note, however, the shear modulus and the polar moment of inertia, they actually cancel out here because if you move this section to the other side, they're equivalent, so they just cancel out each other. So you could go ahead and distribute this. So once you distribute accordingly, we have T times the length from A to C, take away TB times LAC plus LBC, which this is equivalent to the entire length of the shaft, and we could just call it the length L. And we finally get, once you do some algebra, change it to one side, divide by the length, you, f you are able to solve for the torque, at, the torque reaction at B, which is equal to the ratios of the lengths. So the length AC divided by the entire length times the torque that we solved for. And the same thing, since we already, once we have this value, we're able to solve for TA. So once you do this, you just plug in and solve for the appropriate reactions. So TB is equal to 0.12 kilonewton meters. And you just plug in TB into here to get UTA. And TA is 0.18 kilonewton meters. Now, once we have the torques, we just use the shear stress due to the torsion equation to solve for the shear stresses at both 
of these segments since we did the free body diagram and cut them up from the between the portion point A and C we have TA that we're going to be using to solve for the shear stress within the segment and TB within the segment CB so let's go ahead and do that so here are the equations for the maximum shear stress due to due to the torsion at section AC we have TA times the radius divided by polar moment of inertia and for BC we're using TB in this case so we go ahead and solve so once you plug in and calculate here is the maximum shear stress that's going to be developed within the shaft from section AC 14.32 megapascals and in section BC is 9.55 megapascal so as you can see here depending on where along the section the torque is being applied in the shaft it will in fact experience different shear stresses with along that shaft you see in one segment it's be experiencing a lot more than the other segment so this is something also to consider when it comes to designing of shafts where exactly is the torque going to be applied along that shaft to design accordingly such that there won't be any failure so just to recap here, whenever you have a shaft um, with a external torque being applied and it's fixed on both ends, this is where you're going to utilize the relationship of the sum of torques being equal to zero for static equilibrium. And then you're also going to, going to do the sum of the angle of twist to be able to solve for the reaction um, the torques at each of the reaction points where it's fixed. So those are the two relationships you're going to be using for these statically indeterminate torque loaded members is what it's called.